Pokemon Go has announced the changes for the next season of Go Battle League, the Hidden Gems update. Maybe we'll find some diamonds in the rough with uh, this update here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the moveset changes, the move rebalances, and the new moves that are coming to Pokemon Go and how they will influence the Great League meta. Normally in these videos, I talk about like the cups and the Pokemon you should look out for right away for the cups, but I'm a little bit crunched for time with my work schedule and I got a regional this weekend with all these moveset changes. So we're just going to focus on the move updates. But before we go further, howdy. So for our new attacks, we have Liquidation, a charge move, and Leaf Age, a fast move. For Liquidation, it's basically a crunch clone, so not a bad attack. Overall, kind of equal to Surf, maybe slightly worse, but depending on the Pokemon that gets it and how their, you know, charge move timing works out, it could be slightly better because it's got the debuff chance. Overall, a pretty benign move, but not a bad move. So Pokemon that get it will still be appreciative of it. And then we got Leafage, and, uh, or Leafage. Leafage is a, a bullet punch clone, which isn't exactly exciting. They could have made this have one more energy gain, made it a Shadow Claw clone, and I think it would have been a lot more exciting. It wouldn't even be that crazy, because the thing that makes Shadow Claw, like, super insano is because Ghost-type has really good coverage. Uh, so as a Grass-type attack, I don't think it'd be that crazy. But a bullet punch clone, it's not exactly inspiring. So everything that gets leafage probably doesn't really want it. But here we are. Uh, then we got the attack changes. Ice Skull Spear, Poison Fang, and Rollout are all getting buffed. These are buffs that should have happened when the moves got nerfed in the past to kind of offset the fact that they're getting nerfed. All three got nerfed in energy. So these two got a higher energy cost and Rollout had a lower energy gain. And it was pretty harsh to the Pokemon affected. Like, this kind of killed Nidoqueen, and this nerf kind of killed uh, the Walrein there. And uh, if the Icicle Spear had a little bit more power, I think that would have been workable for the Walrein, or at least a nice Constellation Prize. Same for the Poison Fang. Uh, so it's nice that this is finally happening. Uh, neither of these changes are really going to pull these Pokemon back into the meta. However, another change that I'll talk about a little bit later is going to be big news for Walrein, and will probably pull Walrein back into the meta. But as far as Nidoqueen's concerned, not so much. I guess Golbat and Shadow Golbat, they just keep winning here, but still probably not any bigger than they were before. Then when it comes to Rollout, I don't know, it's not that exciting. It's not that big of a change. Uh, Miltank and Dunsparce aren't going to be making big names for themselves with this Rollout buff, but it is appreciated. Then we got Mudbomb game buff, which is pretty cool for everything that has Mudbomb. A little bit more chunkage happening. And then we got the big change here, which is Seed Bomb. Seed Bomb is now having a higher base power, which is kind of cool, but they increased the energy cost. As far as the damage per energy of Seed Bomb goes now, it is now equivalent to Bulldoze. Now, it's not as bad as Bulldoze because it is a lower energy cost than Bulldoze, all things considered, but it is a pretty garbage attack now. And this, more than anything else, hits the Trevenant because Trevenant is now losing its bait speed, it's losing its closing power, it's losing how quickly it can get to the Seed Bomb. And that doesn't sound like a whole heck of a lot. Like, it still has its defensive typing, it still has Shadow Claw and Shadow Ball, and that's basically all you need to have to be not bad, you know? Like, look at Kofagrigus. That's all that Kofagrigus basically has. Um, and it doesn't have a Grass typing to flavor it. So Trevenant isn't completely dead, um, but this definitely nerfs it in a really significant way. Uh, it was the grass type that beat all of their grass types and then kind of consolidated a whole bunch of other different roles. And now it's weaker in several of those roles, which is, I think, overall a good thing for the meta because other Pokemon can kind of come in and pick up where Trevenant is now slacking. And Trevenant will still probably be around because at the end of the day, it's got Shadow Claw, it's got Shadow Ball. Um, but with this nerf, this is the nerf that will probably bring bring Walrein back into action here because in the past the energy nerf to Walrein one big problem it had in the open great league meta was the fact that it would get outpaced to the charge move Trevenant could come in and then beat it with the seed bomb because you wouldn't get to the icicle spear in time well now Trevenant's having problems getting to the seed bomb right so icicle spear is going to be able to get it in time so a really really good buff for Walrein not the icicle spear but the seed bomb nerf. Then when it comes to the move availability updates, I'm just going to highlight the, the Pokemon that really got a lot out of this. First up, we got Alolan Sandslash. It's got Drill Run now. Like, 
ever since Mindjoke ran Alolan Sandslash at one of his regionals, I've been following it and I've been using it myself to great success at regionals, getting a top 16 placement at Fort Wayne with the Alolan Sandslash. And I gotta tell you, Bulldoze is such a bad move, but you need to use it, right? So Drill Run being just a straight upgrade in every single way to the Bulldoze is fantastic for the Alolan Sandslash. And uh, yeah, I'd say this thing was like spicy before, a more meta side of spicy, like it was kind of leaking in to the meta zone. It wasn't so much spice. Now I think this is going to be a meta Pokemon. Maybe not a meta staple, but a really strong, solid Pokemon that you're probably going to see a lot of when it comes to GBL. Uh, Clefable, Fairy Wind, that's pretty cool. Disarming Voice is really nice for Wigglytuff, and the metas for Wigglytuff is big. Golduck getting Liquidation, not bad. It appreciates it, but it's not going to change the game for Golduck there. Dugong getting Drill Run, though. That is pretty significant, because the big noise with the Wall Rain getting the Icicle Spear way back when was the perfect coverage, right, of ground and ice. Dugong has Icy Wind, probably the best ice type attack in the game that most Pokemon can learn. I don't know anything about Glaciate, so don't at me if Glaciate's better. And it's got Drill Run, which may be the best ground type charge move in the game, Maybe second to Earthquake, because Earthquake's got such devastating power. But Drill Run does come quicker and has comparable like damage per energy. So uh, all in all, this is really good news for the Dugong. Problem that Dugong has is that it is a little bit on the slower side. Ice Shard isn't the fastest energy gaining move in the West. And because Dugong is a little bit soft hitting, you know, coupled with that lack of speed, it's still going to struggle in matchups where you're going to want to be Drill Running the snot out of stuff. But the fact that you can drill run stuff now like 40 percent damage to like registeel or lantern right you're gonna have to land like three of them in a lot of cases right but before you weren't doing no 40 percent damage to them you're doing like piddly nothing against those pokemon so yeah really big deal for the dugong here expect to see a lot of this i don't think that we're gonna see like when it comes to a lone sand slash wall rain and the Dugong as like premier ice type Pokemon in the meta. I think there are solid differences between the three of them that make one stand out over the other, depending on what your team comp is and what kind of strategy you're going for. Um, Dugong is a little bit slower than the other two. It's not as explosive, but Dugong does feel a little bit safer, but your opponent can also take advantage of that safety net. So it's going to come down to team comp as far as, and strategy as far as which one of the ice types is going to be the better ice type for you. Um, but Dugong is extremely formidable now. Like, it was good before, now it's even better. It also has Liquidation, for whatever reason. I, I don't know, maybe in a limited format or some sort of spicy team, no one's expecting the Liquidation until they get hit by it. <laughs> you know, and now all your HP has been liquidated. Congratulations. So, I could see it, but bread and butter-wise, you know, Ice Shard, um... Icy Wind is too good to give up, and Drill Run is too insane to give up, so I don't know where we're fitting in Liquidation, if you ask me. Uh, these updates here, whatever. Um, this is kind of cute with the Fairy Wind. Togetic could use a better charge move to work with it, but hey, it's cute. If you saved a whole bunch of Togetic from the Community Day, congratulations. Maybe it'll be cool sometime. Um, but here we have one of the bigger updates, and that is Quagsire getting the Mud Bomb. Uh, with Mud Bomb, along with the Mud Bomb buff, Quagsire is now kind of not not exactly as good as Swampert, but more on a Swampert level here, and has some interesting tech against opposing Ice type and Flying type Pokemon that Swampert doesn't exactly have in the form of Stone Edge. We got Ground and Rock coverage here, perfect neutral coverage. Quagsire is set to be a big meta Chad King, but Stone Edge is still a pretty awkward attack. You know, it ain't no Rock Slide. It's kind of a little bit on the slower side, so that can make things a bit awkward for Quagsire closing fights against, you know, flying type attackers. What is kind of interesting, though, is in a lot of Noctowl situations, or at least some Noctowl sims I ran, the increased power from the Mud Bomb allows it to close on the Mud Bomb in some situations. So that Mud Bomb buff is kind of coming in clutch there for the Quagsire. Like if Quagsire just got Mud Bomb and it was the pre-buff Mud Bomb, 
it wouldn't be as cool. It'd still be pretty dang cool, but it wouldn't be as cool. But with that little bit of extra damage, it is able to get some cheeky KOs in there too. Another thing to mention with Quagsire uh, versus Swampert in the mirror, if you look on PV Poke, you'll see that Quagsire is always losing. That's because they come down to a CMP tie. So if you're up against the Shadow Swampert and you've got a one fast move energy lead on it, then you will be able to subdue it with the Mud Bomb there. So that's also pretty cool for the Quagsire. So watch out. It's the Swampert that can punish Ice-type Pokemon and Flyers potentially a little bit better. But, you know, Hydro Cannon, Shadow Boosted Hydro Cannon, that's still pretty insane. Quagsire does have to compete with that. And with uh, Trevenant being out of the meta, we're probably going to see an uptick in Swamperts too, so which means that people are going to be focusing on countering Mud Boys possibly a little bit more. So Quagsire's got some work cut out for it, but definitely a big winner in this update. Brutal Swing on Tyranitar. I don't know why they did that, but I guess that's cool. Good job, Tyranitar. Uh, and then we got Cridilly. Now, I don't know if this is a hidden gem in the update. I haven't seen too much chatter on Cridilly's buff here. Maybe the pros are trying to keep it for themselves, right? Um, but it's getting Rock Slide. And Cridilly operates in this really interesting space where it can counter flying type Pokemon and it can counter Mud Boys. Where, like, if you're trying to counter flying types, you're generally going to be vulnerable to the Mud Boys. And if you're trying to counter the Mud Boys, you're usually going to be vulnerable to the flying type. Cridilly operates in that spot. Now, it's not like a crazy good Pokemon. When it comes to the Mud Boys, it's taking neutral damage from both ground and water type attacks. When it comes to the Flyers, it's taking neutral damage from the flying type attacks. So it's not that great for Cridilly, you know, as that option. And then when it comes to Steel type Pokemon and counter users, Cridilly just gets mulched. So it's not the most perfect Pokemon out there. You're, you're gonna have to put some forethought, some skill into using the Cridilly. Um, but I think this is a really big benefactor from this update, and I think we will see Cradilly popping up in GBL and in the tournament circuit uh, quite often now, because, I mean, it does the job well. Before Stone Edge, too slow. Too slow. It was just missing a lot of KOs, and it really wasn't able to follow up on them fast enough or well enough. But with Rock Slide, it doesn't really have to worry as much anymore. So Cradilly and Shadow Cradilly, definitely some powerhouses to keep your eyes out for. Then we got Armaldo, and Armaldo getting liquidation, that's not too crazy big, but, like, Armaldo's getting kind of interesting, I gotta say. It's not good. Just preface, it's not that good. But if you run Sims on it, if you do get that uh, cross poison buff to your attack early on, Armaldo can get kind of wacky. So, I mean, just if you're catching... Whatever is the pre-evolution of this thing, I don't even remember its name. Um, but, you know, just, just keep your eye on those IVs. When it comes to the Shadow ones, keep your eyes on those IVs. Maybe Star One, keep it in a bag, have it ready to go. Because this thing might just be one move away from being kind of more interesting than it is now. But right now, I wouldn't even say it's spicy. It's just something to keep on your radar. I don't know. Then we got Floatzel, Liquidation, kind of whatever. Driftblum with the Mystical Fire. I haven't run a whole lot of Sims on this. I've seen online that people are saying that this is a huge crazy buff for Driftblum, but I don't think it's like that big of a deal. Fire type coverage is kind of whatever. Ice type coverage generally is a bit better. So, eh, you know, there will be some limited formats probably where Mystical Fire is pretty big for Driftblum, but then if that's the case, there's going to be other Driftblum. So you might want to Icy Wind those Driftblum. You know, are you going to run both debuffing attacks? Well, now you don't have Shadow Ball, so, like, that's awkward. So, I don't know. I think it's a nice little buff for Driftblum, a nice little tool for its toolkit. Uh, but I think I would have much rather seen this on another Ghost-type Pokemon, maybe, like, Gorgeist or Miss Magius. I talked about this in my Mystical Fire video. I'll link above in the description if you want to check out that discussion a little bit more. But I think bringing some new ghost types into the meta having different pokemon have different kind of jobs makes the meta look cooler than you know what it can be it does feel kind of same old same old after a while but you got some new faces right we got the same old faces drift bloom why does it get the special thing when it already does this job just a little bit different why can't we have a different pokemon doing the job a little bit different that's uh you know that's all i gotta say on that i'm happy for drift bloom congratulations man definitely a solid pokemon and yeah like i said New tool for the toolbox. Driftbloom appreciates it. We got the Leaf Agers. Why did Niantic make this move so bad? I don't know. Probopass is getting Zap Cannon a little bit too late. Like, this is a pretty big gain for the Probopass, but I can't 
think of like why you'd want to use Probabast instead of Registeel. I guess it does have Rock Slide and Magnet Bomb, so it's a little bit faster in some ways, but Registeel is generally going to be doing the job a lot better, so maybe in some limited formats we could see Probopass rising up. Uh, we got Heatran, Earth Power. Um, somebody from Master League could probably speak on this better. I don't play Master League. I don't think I ever will play Master League at this point now. And uh, I, I imagine this isn't a huge thing for the meta, but this is a pretty big deal for Heatran because, you know, ground type coverage pairs really well with fire and rock type attacks. So Heatran definitely appreciates the gain here. Samurott getting liquidation. Why? Whimsicott, getting Seed Bomb. I think this would be a little bit cooler if Seed Bomb wasn't trash now, but since it is trash, it's kind of weird. <laughs> like, uh, maybe if they gave Whimsicott Seed Bomb last season, that'd be pretty cool, but this season, kind of like, wow. Uh, Liquidation on the Caracasa, whatever. Amolga getting Acrobatics is pretty interesting. People have been hyping this up a lot on Twitter. I think it might be a little bit overhyped because, to me, it's like, we got Zapdos, right? It's the same kind of job as Zapdos. It's a bit of a tankier Zapdos. And instead of like the big damage coming from the electric type attack, it's coming from the flying type attack, which is different. Um, but I think overall, like, do you see a lot of Zapdos flying around the meta? No. You, you might see some Amolga because it's got that new shine going on. It's the cool new thing, but I think it's going to fall off a little bit. Like, it's not bad because Zapdos isn't bad, but the meta generally isn't too kind to our uh, flying electric friends. Or our electric friends in general. They have it pretty rough. And we got Electros, another tool for its weird toolbox. This Pokemon is like maybe one fast move update away from being a little scary, but as it stands, it's just collecting all these good charge moves. To one day unleash itself upon the world. Or maybe not. Uh, Litwick is also getting Mystical Fire. So that's kind of neat. Uh, for like little cups. A little something. A little Litwick. Liquidation on the Bear Tick. Whatever. Uh, Leaf Ages. Nobody cares. Although I don't think Dartrix really has a other fast move it can use. So maybe it's kind of cool there. I don't know. Uh, Primarina. Getting Disarming Voice is interesting. Because it is a Charm and Waterfall user. It doesn't have lower energy cost charge move. So Disarming Voice is a lower energy cost charge move. Which is pretty cool for it. We're going to get Hydro Cannon eventually. I think it's going to be interesting to see what the preference for the Fairy type charge move is going to be after that. Because Moon Blast is really good. But Primarina needs a lower energy cost charge move right now. But once it gets that Hydro Cannon, how much are we going to care about the Disarming Voice? Uh, you know, question for the future. Then we got more Leafage. Yay. And then Galissapod getting Liquidation. Galissapod is like one charge move away from being kind of scary in the Great League. And according to PV Poke, at least the raw rankings, this thing might be really good in the Ultra League with Liquidation alone. So just a little taste of the action that there is to come with the Galissapod here. Um, but yeah, its other charge moves are pretty weak. It's got x Scissor and then other ones that it probably won't use because they're so bad. And x Scissor at least gets a same type attack bonus, right? So Galissapod, you know, it's got Fury Cutter, it's got Shadow Claw, it's got Liquidation. One more, like, good move to round it out. And we could be seeing G-Pod in the meta. But as it stands, uh, maybe in the Ultra League, I don't really know a whole lot about the Ultra League, but in the Great League, probably not going to see a whole lot of Galissapod. And then Ursaluna, finally getting the Ice Punch. So that's like one, another piece of the Ursaluna Exodia that we were praying for back when Ursaluna first came out. So yeah, definitely an upgrade for it in the Master League. It's definitely usable in the Master League as is. At least that's what the data has shown so far. Definitely a good upgrade for Ursaluna. It still would really appreciate getting Counter or Shadow Claw, but right now it doesn't have it. But it does have Ice Punch, so it's one step closer to its, like, perfect form. And its form is already pretty good as is, so definitely an appreciative buff. So, overall, those are the changes coming our way. The biggest change of all to the meta is going to be the Trevenant nerf. I think it's going to be sort of like how things were with Walrein, where at the beginning of the season, after the Walrein nerf, people were still using it. But after like a couple weeks, people kind of caught on to the fact that Walrein just wasn't doing what it used to do. 
you know, any longer. And I think that same sort of situation is going to happen to Trevenant. And then on top of that, we got these ice type buffs, which are pretty big. Perfect coverage, really good attacks, really good defensive type on these Pokemon. So they're going to be in the meta. Trevenant doesn't want anything to do with that. So, you know, uh, it's nice seeing you, Trev. We'll probably still see Trevenant around a little bit, but it definitely isn't going to be the household name that it once was. And that's probably the biggest change overall. We got these cool ice types, but there's plenty of, like, tried, tested, and true way of managing them. So I don't think it's a big meta shift in that respect. I think it's mostly Trevenant kind of going down a bit. And the meta, for the most part, is going to be the same. We're going to have some new faces like Dugong with the Drill Run, uh, Lolan Sandslash being more meta with the Drill Run, <laughs> and then Quagsire showing up as a competitive Mud Boy, and then Credilly being cool. Let's just rehash the whole video, why don't we? But I don't think the meta is going to be changed in a super significant way. One thing that's pretty exciting for me, though, personally, is that we are kind of going back closer to the spring slash summer of 2022 meta, which was a better time for my boy Dedene. Actually, Rise to Occasion DM'd me right away when this update dropped. I was still at work, so, ah. And he was like, hey, you know, these meta updates, it's kind of good for Dedene. And, you know, we got some scary Pokemon out here, like Alolan Sandslash and then the Quagsire. And Credilly, kind of scary too. But less Trev. Little man, kind of likes it. At any rate, that's all I got to say right now about the season of Hidden Gems. If you got any questions on this content, of course, comment below. Let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoy this kind of content and you want to see more like it, well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. Swag. I'd also like to give a special shout out to these patron supporters. If you want to support Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. Uh, it's basically Icicle Spear Energy. It's the old Icicle Spear now, or at least the the new old Icicle Spear. It's a, it's 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 what this 